This time, the third one will be on uh, Nermin Abadan on that. I have very little time left, and I have to cover uh, I have to cover Nermin Abadan or not uh, this week. Uh, maybe uh, last week we will have a discussion comparing uh, various sociologists. At that time, we can talk about them. But here, just allow me, and maybe we can even this week we can turn back and we can we can compare three of them because the the three are contemporaries and they are in complementary and conflicting positions huh? three of them have uh, now if if we think of uh, Bourdieu's uh, 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 space uh, uh, field huh? now if we think of sociology field and there are positions in the sociological field uh, now the position occupied by uh, Sheriff Mardin uh, in opposing camps uh, okay now uh, actually these are uh, in a sense three schools as a matter of fact both Nermin Abadan Unat and Sheriff Mardin are in the same faculty and in the same department. In two departments, there were no departments at that time. They were in the same faculty in the, in the general department of political science and public administration, two different kursu, and they were in competition with each other, Nermin Abadan Unat, Unat and Sheriff Mardin. Now, uh, Vivejal Krai, okay, in, in another university, Middle East Technical University, uh, but uh, as uh, we can, I can say, uh, especially Sheriff Mardin and Vivejal Krai uh, represent two different schools. As a matter of fact, I can say that uh, Sheriff Mardin uh, from a new perspective, is focused on culture and identity, as was doing done by Hilm Ziya Ülken, Fındıkoğlu, etc. Whereas Vejel Kray was a continuation of Ankara School uh, of Niyazi Berkes and Ece Boran, and focusing more more on social structure. Now, Nermin Abadan Unat, as a political scientist and as a sociologist, is also, in a sense, although she doesn't have organic relationships with Ankara School, like Vivejal Pry, but uh, her approach, although not exactly similar, is parallel uh, to. Uh, uh, to be Bejal Kreis. Now, I will, for example, talk about one of the books that they together on women, uh, women in Turkish society. That book, in that book, uh, they are together, uh, Nermin Abadan Unat and Bejal Kreis. Nermin Abadan Unat's story is also very interesting, actually, because uh, she is daughter of a Turkish businessman who married an Australian German woman and uh, uh, Nermin Nabadan Unat is born into that family in Vienna in 1921. So earlier, uh, earlier than uh, Cry and earlier. So the, she's the oldest one, actually. Uh, of uh, uh, Sheriff Mardin. Okay, now she is educated uh, in Austrian schools. She knows German, uh, French, uh, and uh, even perhaps English. But at one point, towards the middle of 1930s, actually before. Uh, the starting of Second World War uh, 
1937, her father died. So she's left with uh, her mother. Now, that's really interesting. Now, how, how old is she? She's 16 years old in 1937. A 16 years old girl is looking to Turkey and she is a very much fan, fan of Atatürk. Uh, how, what, what are the new institutions Atatürk is building? She's following that. Uh, and I don't know how she negotiated uh, with, her, with her mother, but her mother allowed her uh, and bought a ticket for her uh, in the train in 1937 to come to Turkey as a matter to Izmir. Huh? And uh, entered into the school that Vivejal Kray was a student, of course, without knowing. I mean, that was a girls' school at that time that uh, she could have joined. Uh, so she didn't know Turkish. Uh, she knew German, uh, uh, French, uh, English, but not Turkish. So she learned uh, uh, Turkish. Uh, and uh, Vivejal Kray, it seems, although younger, uh, than her, helped her. Um, so she become, uh, she is the dependent one on Vajel because uh, Vajel, although younger, uh, she's, she knows uh, the language and the school and the relationships. She has friends already, etc., etc. Anyway, okay, now uh, uh, from 1937, to 1940 in girls' school in Izmir. And then, as an independent woman, she goes to uh, Istanbul. And she talked about that in a video. Uh, I advise you to listen. And at that time, in 1940, there was no entrance exam or anything. So she asked about, where is the registration for Istanbul University? And they po pointed out a woman. Uh, so she went to her and she talked with her and she said, uh, which faculty do you know, do you want? And she said, law, faculty of law. Okay, she was registered into faculty of law of Istanbul University. If you remember, faculty of law was also the faculty of other sociologists that we have already studied. Huh? Okay, and then... Uh, in 1944, she graduates uh, from there, uh, and she starts writing. Uh, okay, she comes to Ankara, and she write, starts writing as a columnist in Ulus newspaper. Uh, Ulus was, at that time, a uh, newspaper of the, uh, uh, of the, uh, the party in power. Republican People's Party. We are talking about second half of uh, 1940s, okay? Uh, but at that point, uh, she decides to join, uh, uh, or no, I think she enters into assistantship exam of uh, Faculty of Political Science of Ankara University, and she becomes First, in, this is in 1950s, first woman faculty member, first assistant. She, she, in that video, she says, I, I, I was the first uh, associate professor and first full professor, woman professor, woman. Uh, hmm? uh, as a matter of fact, uh, when uh, in 1930s, she wanted to go, I mean, before going to uh, Faculty of Languages, uh, History and uh, Geography, she also uh, thought of whether she can enter into Faculty of Political Science or po Faculty of uh, Law, but she wasn't able to, uh, to join it. So 
uh, so she joined the other one. Now, uh, Naimin Abadanunat was able to go uh, uh, to go beyond that boundary, boundary barring, uh, stopping women entering into into the university. In the, at the beginning, as students in these, and later in 40s and 50s as a faculty member. But uh, Namin Abadan Unat was able to succeed in surpassing that barrier. And she became first, first female faculty member uh, in uh, Faculty of Political Science of Ankara University. And she started uh, doing graduate work. But in the meantime, she won a Fulbright scholarship and went to Minnesota University for uh, one year and came back, uh, finished her uh, her thesis in that video. Uh, she talked about that she was ill and she wrote her PhD thesis uh, while she was in bed. Uh, anyway, you know, it was uh, difficult times. Uh, She's a determined uh, woman, as you can see, you know, her her mother back in Vienna and traveling to Izmir, you know, as a 16 year old uh, girl. Uh, OK, uh, so she became uh, a research and researcher and defender of women's rights in Turkey. Huh? So together with uh, uh, they did uh, conferences about uh, women's rights and how uh, more and more uh, they should be able to join uh, the education system, university system, legal system, in, in all uh, spheres of institutional life in Turkey. And as a matter of fact, in 1978, he became a female member of Turkish Parliament, Turkish Senate. Senate. She was she was not a politician, you know. She didn't go and not elected, but members of Senate was appointed uh, by uh, the president uh, of the republic, and she was appointed uh, as Senate member, senator. Uh, in Turkish Parliament between 1978 and 1980. Okay, now her publications. Now, as I already said, she is known for uh, women's studies, gender studies. Actually, she is one of the founders of uh, gender studies in Turkey. Uh, first in Ankara University Political Science faculty, uh, but also through uh, Turkish Social Sciences Association. As I said, she and myself, we were members of executive committee uh, at one point during uh, 1970s. Uh, she organized uh, together with other faculty members uh, seminars and conferences on women, uh, uh, she, as I said, uh, uh, she has several books. For example, there's Women in Turkish Society published by Brill in 1981. Uh, uh, she's the editor. Uh, she has another book, Women in Developing World, uh, and several other books and articles. That is her one field. The second field, she is one of the early researchers that started studying Turkish guest workers in Germany, guest workers in Germany. Uh, for example, in 1975, she published one of her famous books, uh, Migration and Development, Migration and Development, how uh, uh, peasants from villages of Turkey went to Germany, 
France, other countries, but mainly to Germany as uh, guest workers, guest arbeiter in German uh, language. And how, after a point, they started uh, sending the remittances. Huh? In 1970s, uh, tourism was not very much uh, developed in Turkey, and uh, exports was very limited. There were only exports of agricultural goods, like hazelnuts and and similar uh, 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 agricultural goods, figs, for example. Uh, so that was not enough. Uh, foreign currency. So remittances of workers was one of the main categ uh, category of uh, uh, foreign currency uh, for Turkey, according to development uh, efforts of, of the Republic during uh, during 70s. Although towards the end of 70s, as we discussed in uh, social structure of Turkey, uh, if you remember from Chalar Kedar's book, uh, State and Class, uh, uh, Transformation of Establishment and Transformation of Turkish Republic, Turkish State and Society, uh, there was a crisis, a crisis towards the end of 1970s. These workers' remittances were not enough anymore. So, political crisis, and they could coup d'etat, 1980 coup d'etat. Uh, anyway, uh, so, Nami uh, Abadan uh, Ulmaz, two main field of research and contribution are uh, women and migration, international migration, uh, migration especially to Germany. Uh, German being her native language, and being and uh, being born in Austria uh, and learning uh, German as her native language, had her course uh, uh, to uh, study uh, to establish connections with institutions in Germany, and and hence she was able uh, to carry out research. Uh, there are there are other researchers, of course. Uh, uh, not, was not alone uh, in doing that research. Uh, now here I put a book actually by uh, Turks in Europe from guest worker to transitional citizen. Uh, actually, I put here a review of this book, a review by. David Pardun of this book, uh, Turks in Europe from Gasper to Transnational Citizen, or in this review, this person, uh, David Pardun from Humboldt University of Berlin, uh, is evaluating Namin uh, Abadan uh, Unat's work. Uh, now, for example, he says, widely known for her work on international migration, political sociologist Nermin Abadanat has played a central role in chronicling and analyzing Turkish migration to Western Europe. Uh, she has been among the first researchers studying the impact of migration on both sending country Turkey and receiving countries, Germany, France, uh, even Sweden, uh, and, uh, and he says, uh, David Pruden says, this book is an outline of his research, which spans almost a half century. So this is published in 1911, uh, and uh, she started doing research in 19, uh, late 1950s, early 60s. So. 50 years of research uh, is collected here in this uh, in this book, and this is uh, here. Uh, there is a two-page uh, review of uh, Namin Abadan's uh, work on uh, international migration, Turkish migration to uh, 
uh, to Germany especially and uh, their transformation from guest worker to transitional citizen. Uh, transitional, uh, they are not, they are unable to become permanent. Okay, of course, there are uh, uh, those who became German citizens. Uh, uh, but uh, initially, as they went there, they were transitional. They were conceptualizing themselves. Okay, well, I will accumulate money here, and then I will go back and establish a business in Turkey, or go back and have one, my uh, retirement. Uh, now, there are some Turkish workers who returned to their villages and who studied that, returning workers. Let me ask this question to you. A sociologist that we studied previously uh, studied these returners, German workers, Alamanji, Ibrahim Yasa. Ibrahim Yasa uh, found them in their villages and talked with them, ad administered a questionnaire to them, and wrote a book on return returnees, return migrants from Germany, Alamanji Jews. And she, he talked about uh, he talked about various family types like Taigeldi family, and this was uh, Alamanji family. Alamanji family is something like half of the, the family went to Germany. Some remained in in the village. They sent remittances to them, and then stayed there, or some came back and unif unified, or some members who remained here went there. So uh, Namin Abadan also talked about this, like Ibrahim Yasa. Actually, Ibrahim Yasa, Sherif Mardin, and Namin Abadan Unat were in Faculty of Political Science of Ankara University at the same time. I also put here uh, another article, uh, education problems of Turkish Turkish migrant children. You can download that and read it. But I downloaded a part of uh, a 1978 publication, Modernization of Turkish Women. Modernization of Turkish Women. How growth of professional women in Turkey, this is the first sentence, represents certainly one of the most conspicuous steps towards modernization. This is a summary uh, of that publication. I think you can uh, read that uh, too. And then, uh, as I said, there are uh, videos uh, by herself. She's talking about how uh, she entered into the faculty. Uh, she's talking about uh, migration, other issues, women, and uh, there's also uh, an interview by Sedef Kabash on on migration. Uh, so you can read, uh, you can listen to these videos. Thank you being present here. Uh, I am glad that you were able to come in front of your screen and listen to me. Thank you very much. Goodbye. See you.